Let's talk about syncing and sourcing in the context of input and output devices for PLCs. The idea can be understood by thinking of a sink, a kitchen sink. So the source of the water or the source of the current is the spigot at the top and then the sink is where the the current returns to. It's where it flows out of. And so if you just keep this analogy in mind you can understand the idea behind sinking and sourcing the concept and, and what it means. Now we always talk about conventional current flow because in actual electrical flow the electrons flow from lower potential up to higher potential if you want to think about it that way. Uh, conventional current flow just imagines that the positive is uh, higher up in elevation if you want to think of it that way. So a higher electric potential and it's as if charges flow down. Of course they flow in the other way, but that doesn't really matter. All that matters is that the sink side is the negative side and the source side is the positive side or what we'd consider to be hot. In terms of AC instead of DC the sink would be neutral and hot would be the source. Now a lot of different terms are thrown around in co the context of sinking and sourcing. One of them is PNP versus NPN. These are just different names for essentially the same thing. Now how do, what do I mean? Well PNP and NPN refers to the type of transistor and these two transistors are sort of opposites of one another and the way they're set up because of because of the way that they work typically a PNP transistor provides connection to the positive side of the supply whereas an NPN provides uh, connection to the negative or the, the, the common side or ground and basically they operate as a switch where they're either on or off they're either an infinite resistance or a zero resistance essentially and of course all you really do is just apply a, a current to the base of the transistor and that's what turns the transistor on or if you don't apply it it turns it off but the idea is that you're, you're really just trying to use a transistor as a switch instead of having a mechanical switch that can wear out and that a human being has to turn maybe it'd be nice to have a piece of circuitry like a transistor that could turn a load on and off and so you'll notice how in the left hand figure the PNP transistor is connected always to the positive su uh, supply whereas the load is always connected to ground and when the PNP transistor is on power can flow through the transistor to the load and then on to ground considering conventional current flow so the positive supply is, is the source and the the load is is you know connected to the sink so we refer to the PNP transistor as a sourcing transistor and the load as sinking then in the opposite case for the NPN transistor. Now you may not be familiar with transistors but there's an easy trick to remembering which one is NPN and PNP. A little more detail on this instead of just saying a generic load maybe the load is a, um, a light emitting diode. Okay so the first new figure we have on the right shows a light emitting diode connected to TR1 and you'll notice that TR1 has an arrow pointing outward so it actually matches and provides current or provides connection to the zero volts the, the common rail and so it's a switch that can turn on and off this LED uh, by simply either providing connection to ground or lifting the connection away from ground uh, so they're sort of backwards to what I have on the left hand side so the, the upper one is matches the one on the right and then the one uh, that's lower on the extreme right matches the case all the way on the left but it's a, a PNP transistor that provides either connection or no connection to the positive terminal to VCC so it either allows current to flow through it by actually providing connection to VCC or it essentially provides infinite resistance to VCC and when it does that then the LED that it's driving is off but uh, when it provides the connection then it's on so again these PNP and ENP and PNP provides connection to positive or to source NPN provides connection to the sink so if we go back all the way to the left hand figure then the, the transistor is a sourcing transistor because it's providing connection to the source the load is a sinking load because it's always connected to common and opposite in the NPN transistor case so how do you tell the difference well there's a little trick I learned way back in high school uh, and if once you hear this you probably won't forget it I, I've remembered it ever since I first read it NPN if you think of uh, not pointing inward NPN well sure enough there's an arrow pointing outward right it's not 
pointed towards the base, whereas a P in P is a pointing in pointer. Okay, if you just remember it that way, I don't know, it may not work for you, it works for me. So, not pointing inward, NPN, pointing in pointer. Now, that's not really what it stands for. Uh, the positive, the, the P and N refer to positive and negative. It's a type of doping that's added to the semiconductor to change the characteristics of the, the semiconductor. But just to remember which one's which and which schematic symbol needs an arrow pointing towards the base and which one has an arrow coming out of it, well, not pointing inward, NPN, and pointing in pointer uh, help me remember it. And I can always figure it out just by thinking of that little you know, trick. Here's an application where several different transistors are used and this is actually an H-bridge. An H-bridge is a device that's used for driving a DC motor in two different directions where you can turn it on and off with electrical signals rather than having to take the motor wires and unplug them and turn them around for example. Uh, you can also typically uh, pulse the transistors on and off uh, using something called pulse width modulation and give the motor an average lower voltage and make it go at a lower speed. So there's a lot that can be done with an H-bridge, but these are very common in robotics and, and other applications where you need to be able to drive a motor forward and backward equally well. Now, it's called an H-bridge because it kind of looks like an H. If you look at the center section where the, the round M, which stands for the motor that's in the center, that, that looks like that. it's a, the horizontal bar of an H, and then the, the two closest transistors, or the four closest transistors to the motor, provide sort of the upright structure of the H, and that's, that's why it's called an H-bridge. Now what you'll notice is that there are two upper transistors that are close to the motor and the pointers point inward, so not pointing inward, no these do point in, so this is a pointing in pointer. These uh, uh, two TIP32 uh, transistors are in fact PNP type transistors. Notice that they are providing connection to the positive uh, uh, supply, the 9 to 12 volt supply. Now you wouldn't have both of these on at the same time because if you had both of them on then both sides of the motor are tied to the positive rail and the motor won't turn. So the idea is to have one of the TIP32 uh, transistors on and then you'll notice there's some TIP31 transistors and those are both NPN, not pointing inward transistors. And again you wouldn't want both of the TIP31s on, you'd want one or the other on on the opposite side to the transistor, the NPN that you've got on. And that way, let's say you had the upper left TIP32 on, well then power could flow from positive through that transistor, through the motor, and then the lower right TIP31 on, power could then continue on its way through that transistor down to common. And that would complete the circuit and make the motor turn in one direction. On the other hand, if the opposite set was on, the right hand TIP32 upper, and the lower left TIP31, if those two were basically making contact, uh, then the uh, positive pole would go through TIP32. You could think of t the, the transistors as being a switch, just a wire there, go through the motor to the left, and then down through the uh, lower left transistor to ground. Now, you might uh, not understand this because so far I've talked about power as if it's just flowing up and down straight through the transistor, and you might say, well, wait a second there are three connections here. There's, there's something going on off horizontally. Well the horizontal connection is always a base and that's not the main flow of power. That's really, you can think of that as the control. If you allow the base to go positive or negative in voltage then you can turn the transistor on and off. So don't think of power as flowing through the base, through the horizontal wire, but only flowing through the vertical wires. Although that's not exactly true. For our purposes it's close enough. The base is just the control. It's kind of like the switch if you will. Uh, but the bulk of the current and the power flows, you know, uh, vertically through each of these transistors. And so you might wonder, well, I see a couple more transistors, and if you notice, those transistors have not pointing inward pointers, and so they are NPN transistors. And you might wonder, well, what do they do? Well, the purpose of these transistors, you might notice, they connect the bases of, you know, upper right, lower left transistors together, or le upper left, lower right. And basically, these are the transistors that you turn on to cause two transistors to come on and therefore power to go one way through the motor. Or you So you'd never turn on both transistors. The 2N2222s, uh, you would never turn on both. That would be a terrible idea because if you did that, then both the TIP31s and TIP32s would come on and power would just flow straight through them to ground and it would it'd be too much current and it would blow up the transistor. Now you might also wonder what the diodes are for, the BYW29s. Uh, 
those are called overrunning diodes or freewheeling diodes. They're not really relevant to our uh, discussion, but the point is that the motor acts as an inductor. If you don't have those, then when you try to shut off a transistor, the motor will develop a very large electric uh, um, potential that can actually arc across the uh, internals of the transistor and destroy the transistor. So they're, they're protection diodes, really. They protect the transistor from the motor. Um, so it's you would never have on A and B going to the 2N222, uh, well, 2222 transistors, you never have both A and B on at the same time. So you see the truth table down at the bottom where you, if neither of those transistors are on, then, then no transistors conduct and the motor just stops. If you have one on and not the other, then the motor will go in forward, switch it around, the motor will go in reverse, and then never have both on. So this is an application of PNP and NPN transistors. And of course, there's the note there that both A and B high will short circuit the bridge. Now, most uh, bridges don't actually allow this. Uh, most of them have an inversion gate. So you don't actually have access to both A and B. You send either a true or false to one pin on the gate, and that will turn on one or the other. And you might wonder how you turn it off. Well, there are ways. There, there are other uh, pins typically on an H bridge that you can control whether the motor's on or off. But Anyway, this is just an application. This is not a, an output module for a PLC or anything. It's just an application of PNP and NPN transistors. And the key is to remember NPN is not pointing inward. PNP is pointing in pointer. And the way I remember which one connects to the source and the sink, I, I know that positive is the source. So PNP, well, P is the first letter, so that makes me think of positive. So PNP connects to positive, whereas NPN connects to negative or ground or common, whatever you want to there's differences between those obviously but uh, a lot of times those terms are unfortunately used interchangeably so NPN provides connection it is, it is a sinking thing it provides connection to ground PNP provides connection to positive or to the source now this these types of transistors are only used in uh, DC for the purposes we're talking about if you had AC then you have to think of positive as the hot wire whereas uh, you think of a common as the neutral now, considering just a regular DC input, because DC inputs are actually a lot more common than AC. There are AC control signals. Some of this discussion is somewhat moot if we're talking about an AC signal, but DC is so common it's worth talking about. If we have a setup like you see here, where, remember, we, we have to have some external source. So we've got V positive, V negative. This is for field power for our, our motor start switch, let's say. Okay, so it's just a, a simple switch that makes contact or not. And we've got a PLC input module. Well, we have to provide field power, so something's going to have to always connect to the PLC input module. And then the other side of the power supply has to go to the switch, so the switch can either close the circuit and allow the current to flow so that the PLC knows that input is on or, or not to, to lift it. So let's say that we set it up so that the positive, the source, is connected to the PLC input module. Therefore, the module is sourcing. And then negative, or ground, or common, goes to the switch. And therefore, the switch is a sinking device. We, it would be a sinking sensor, essentially, because it's a, even though it's a button, it's a switch. It's, it's a sense-type device. Now, the, if the positive uh, uh, voltage supply gets shorted to ground, no big deal. That's just a load on the power supply. There will be a few somewhere that blows, or the power supply should have protection and shut itself down. If the ground or common gets shorted to ground, well, that's usually no big deal because common is often tied to ground anyway. But the wire that goes between that switch and the actual input the, to the PLC can be quite a long wire. Now, often it's protected by conduit, uh, you know, but it would go from the, you know, typically you'd have a control panel on the machine with start and stop buttons and so forth. But the PLC doesn't sit right there most of the time. It's often remote from that, that, that start button. And so the wiring has to run a long way to get to the PLC. So that, what well, looks like a really small, short run of wire from the motor uh, start switch to the PLC could actually be quite long and run throughout the factory or around the machine. Here's the problem. If somehow that wire gets grounded, say that, you know, somebody's driving a forklift and they drive the tines right into the conduit and smash the wires, well, basically they're going to essentially provide a connection to ground. If that happens, the PLC won't know the difference between that wire in between being cut and grounded, 
and the motor start switch being closed and so it will just start whatever it's supposed to start when that button is pushed and so it'll it'll make something happen and in an accident how would you like it if you know wrecking your car there, there were sensors that instead of triggering the uh, airbag it triggered a self-destruct right <laughs> that would be horrible and so you don't want machines to do things in the context of an accident unless it's things that you've intentionally made them and designed them to do and so here's a, a an example where the PLC can't tell the difference between a user pressing the start button and somebody accidentally cutting a bunch of wires and grounding them out so it's a really bad idea to have sourcing input slices or sorting sourcing input modules and syncing uh, or in other words devices that provide connection to ground syncing uh, sensors or buttons or switches so to clarify this and hopefully make it crystal clear it's as simple as realizing that syncing means it's you know providing connection to the return path for the current sourcing is providing connection to the positive or the, the hot side and so on the left hand side we have a syncing input slice in other words the the device that's in the PLC the the module in the PLC the input module is always connected to ground so it's providing ground for the completion of the circuit whereas the switch is providing connection to the positive rail of the power supply this is a good setup so the the first one on the left is the way you'd want it the switch is sourcing the input uh, module is syncing and that's desirable because think about what happens if the wire between the switch and the syncing input slice gets grounded out well then there's ground on either side of that that resistor which represents the internal sensor for the PLC to realize something's turned on well there's not going to be any current flow because either side of that resistor is at the same potential on the other hand the right hand figure is the type that's typically not preferred now to be fair there are cases where you know a sourcing input slice is okay some PLCs don't have anything of concern that where you you know accidentally turn them on nothing bad would happen not all cases obviously but that's certainly a possibility and sometimes you don't have a choice it's just PNP or sourcing types of input slices are usually a bad idea it's poor practice it's something that yeah you can break the rule but you really need to have a good reason for breaking it so on the right hand side of here we see a switch that is syncing it's providing connection to ground or re the current return and a sourcing uh, module that has a sourcing therefore input slice providing connection to positive outputs are similar in that they can be syncing or sources sourcing now some modules are set up so that you can wire them to be either syncing or sourcing so some input modules some output modules can be either or and it's up to you to decide how to wire them um, and you would just wire them based on you know what's best for your particular situation but um, if we think about the left hand side device we can decide whether we want syncing or sourcing uh, outputs and make some sense of this so our load uh, is maybe it's a starter coil for a big motor or something okay that's our load it's always connected to positive and then the syncing output slice from the PLC the syncing output module therefore always has connection to ground Now remember the PLC has to control over whether its outputs are on or off and all that really is is a connection right it either provides the connection to ground in this case or it doesn't okay and this is we're still on the left hand figure so either that switch is going to provide the connection to ground or not depending on what your program decides is needed well think about it again the wire between the load and the sinking output slice is the vulnerable wire if that wire gets grounded which is the most common case because ground is around everywhere if that wire gets grounded what would happen well then the load would turn on by itself without the PLC turning on that's also bad so the left hand figure with the sinking output slice and sourcing load is a bad idea what you really want is what's in the right picture where the load is connected to the return path for the current in this case ground and therefore it's sinking and the PLC has control over a switch that is sourcing so the, the PLC gets to apply the positive lead to the load and that way if that wire between the what's labeled as the internal switch on the right and the load if that gets grounded out then ground just appears on both sides of the load and load doesn't come on so nothing happens and that way you're, you're pretty sure that uh, you've got control over what actually starts and stops even in case of something accidentally being grounded out 